Hi everyone, my name is Ihab al -Badawi. In this presentation, we're going to have an overview for our recent work submitted to InterSpeech 2020 entitled Voice Conversion and Uses Speech-to-Speech -speech Neurostyle Transfer. This work has been done by myself and under supervision of Professor Sayo Edo. In this work, we're trying to solve the speech style transfer problem, where for a given speaker, we have a speech sample representing male spectrogram features we want to generate target spectrogram samples that contain other speakers' identities while preserving the same content and style of the source speaker. To understand how to do style transfer between two speakers, let's first go over the synthesis pipeline. Starting from a source speaker A, we have a speech sample represented in most spectrogram. We will refer to it as an ISWA. Having the sample as an input for an encoder model, we will get a code representation that has all the information about the content and the speech style of the speaker while ignoring the speaker identity. Then to reconstruct the spectrogram for another target speaker, we will have a generator specific network that takes the code representation D1 and outputs a spectrogram for the target speaker. This spectrogram contains the target speaker identity and the source speaker content speech and style. To get the speech in the time domain, we use additional component, which is a wavenet based vocoder that takes the spectrogram and outputs a waveform in the time domain. Similarly, if we want to do side transfer from speaker B to speaker A, we will do the following. Having speaker B samples and S2, we will fit it through the encoder and to get the Z2 code. Then using speaker A generator G1, we will get the spectrogram for that speaker. And feeding that to the WaveNet vocoder, we will get the final synthesized speech for speaker A. We carry on the training for our model in two steps. First, we will only focus on the auto encoder part. Similar to the previous figure, we will have one encoder that is shared between all input speakers and in different generators for n different target speakers. Only in the training phase, we will have additional components, which is a discriminator network. We have one discriminator for every generator. That's specifically looking for if the generated sample is fake or not. And we train this version of the encoder GAN model end to end to optimize four different losses. First, is the variation autoencoder loss, which is a simple reconstruction loss. Starting from speaker sample S1, we will try to reconstruct it by feeding it through the encoder and then to the corresponding generator, which is D1, to get the reconstructed sample. And then we will compare these two samples to get the reconstruction loss. The next loss we're using is the GAN loss. This loss follows the same steps as the previous version of the encoder loss with one additional component to use. So starting from S1, we will fit it through to the corresponding generator D1 to get the reconstruct sample and then fit this sample to the discriminator to see if the discriminator will be able to detect whether the sample is fake or not. The GAN loss helps specifically in the scenario where the target and source speaker are not the same. Here in this scenario, we cannot use the reconstruction loss simply because we don't have a ground truth to compare with. Instead, we rely on the GAN loss to update the generator and the encoder model's weights. The third loss we're using is a cycle consistency loss. In this loss, we do the following. First, starting from a speaker one sample, we will fit it through the encoder and then use another target speaker generator, say, as M to get a synthesized sample for a different target speaker. Then using this sample, we will try to reconstruct the source speaker sample by feeding it back to the encoder and then use the source speaker generator G1 where it should be redirected this one sample again. And then we will compute the reconstruction loss between the ground truth sample and the final predicted sample. The cycle consistency loss helps to enforce the encoder to generate a code representation that's not speaker specific and only focus on the content and speech style. The final loss we're using is the lighting loss. This loss only focuses on the codes generated from the encoder, where we will use different speaker sample to get different code representations. 
And despite the fact that this code representation for different speakers, they should occupy the same region in the lighting space. And we use the lighting laws to enforce that. After we're done with the training of this step, we will move to the second one, which is the training of the wave network order. So having the male spectrogram samples predicted from each generator, we will do them to condition the wave net model and generate the final waveform in the time domain. Here are a few examples to do a star transfer between two speakers. First, starting from a source female speaker. A woman in jeans and a tank top is sitting in the middle of a tree in bloom. And this is the same sentence spoken by a different target speaker. A woman in jeans and a tank top is sitting in the middle of a tree in bloom. This is another example to do the star transfer starting from the male to the female speaker. A person holding poles is standing on a rock ledge with bushes on each side overlooking mountains. And this is the synthesized version using the female speaker voice. A person holding poles is standing on a rock ledge with bushes on each side overlooking mountains. In our experiments, we use Flickr AK dataset. It contains 40,000 spoken captions generated from 8,000 natural images. This dataset contains hundreds of speakers. We picked two speakers, one male and one female, with the most number of samples for each of them. As for training and testing subsets, we use 70 to 30% split ratio. For the input features, we only rely on log model spectrogram representation to train and test our model with and we use a fixed input window size of 128 by 128. To evaluate our model, we designed three different metrics. First, using the HV spoof challenge generic baseline. In this baseline, we have a Gaussian mixture model to classify if a given sample is being synthesized or not. You will use this model to see if it will struggle to classify our synthesized samples or to easily predict them. And we will use acre error rate to report our results for that. The second metric we're using is the content verification metric. Here we want to see if the content in the source handle is still there in the synthesized version of it. So we will use the generic speech text model to try to generate the transcript of the generated samples. And we will use word error rate to compare between the generated transcript and the original transcript. But first, because the speech to text model that we're using could have additional errors in generated the predicted transcript, we will use it first on the source speaker samples and we will compute the error rate between the original transcript and the generated one from the source speaker sample. And then we will use that as an upper pound and then we will compute the word error rate between the original transcript and the one that's predicted from the synthesized sample. The final metric we're using is a speaker encoding metric. Here we're using an LSTM encoder model that generates 256 feature vector for each sample. This code should be unique for every speaker where if we have different samples for the same speaker, they all should occupy the same region in the 256 dimensional space. And we use this model to verify if the synthesized samples match with the target speaker. And here in this table, we show the results for each metric we used. First, starting from the ASV spoof challenge baseline, trying the same baseline on our data set without any pre-training, we get 38.89 equal error rate, which is very close to the chance error rate that is 50%. And that means it's not easy for the model to classify the samples we have as being synthesized compared to the original results. Moving to the second metric we have, the content verification, the 2.01 is the upper bound we have, and then computing the word error rate between the synthesized samples and the original transcript, we get 10.36 which is close to the upper bound, given the generic nature of the speech-to-text model we use. Moving forward to the final metric we have, which is speaker encoding. 
Here, we report the equal error rate for classifying a given sample to belong to another speaker. And this is a 2D visualization of the 256 feature space. Showing in circles is the origin source speaker samples, and the cross set of points represent the synthesized samples using the star transfer scenario. And as we can see, both the synthesized and the origin samples occupy the same region for the same speaker. This further shows the ability of our proposed model to preserve the speaker identity in the synthesized samples, even in the star transfer scenario. We are planning to post more details and synthesized samples on this website. So please make sure to check it out if you want to learn more about our work or reach out to me if you have any question. Thank you.